Man, it is day number eight, almost midnight. It's been a super busy day and I almost forgot. Over eight days ago now, I challenged myself. I've wanted to build my dream John Deere garden tractor for years out of all the best parts I've collected and I've just never got it done. So the challenge is to work on my project every day, no matter how much or how little I can get done and just keep at it until I'm done. I wanna document my progress to share with you folks along the way too. And so far, I've removed the old worn out engine from my 318 tractor named Bill, and now I wanna get the chassis all cleaned up, and then I'll bring in my 316 tractor named Brutus, and he'll be making the ultimate sacrifice and donating his engine to be put in Bill. And by the end of this episode, I hope to make the transplant complete and be sure that Bill is accepting of the new engine. So if you stick around, I'll show you what I can get done on this project every day for the next 10 days or so. Okay, I'm gonna take off these. These mower deck hangers need to come off. I'll get the other one. All right, I wanna take off this power relay so I can pressure wash this and not damage it. Well, it's about two after midnight now, so technically I guess I covered day eight and nine, right? Because well, it is day nine, it's a Sunday, and I've been dreading today because it's 20 degrees outside, and I'm gonna need the daylight out there because I wanna pressure wash this. Need to get it all cleaned up so it's easier to work on, but I've been here dragging my feet, and if I would just suck it up and quit talking. I should mention that before I started with the pressure washer, I did spray down all the dirtiest bits with some degreaser that I had. I let it soak for a little while before starting and it really helped to get all the grease and oil buildup off of the frame and all the hoses and underside. Also, I hooked the pressure washer up to our hot water spigot and it makes a tremendous difference as well if you're able to use hot water. All right, well, I'm glad that's done. It wasn't too bad, except for towards the end there, the whole thing turned into a giant block of ice. I got it parked over the drain, gonna let it thaw out. We're actually gonna go to a movie tonight, so I ought to be able to get some proper sleep during that. But uh, otherwise, I'll be back on this tomorrow. Well, it is day 10. I just got this all washed up and it looks good now that it's dry. But today is kind of an informational day, a research day, if you will. I'm trying to figure out and plan ahead for what I wanna do for front tires on this thing. I've got these Vetterstein V61 tires that I bought a long time ago. These are 18, eight and a half, eight. The stock tires are 16 by six and a half by eight. So it's still an eight inch rim, but these are a little smaller. And I wanna run the oversize. A lot of times folks will upgrade the front rims to the 400 series tractor, the 420 or the 430. See, there was two different runs of the 318, or basically two different iterations of the front spindles, I should say. The older ones had one inch spindles, and I believe the newer ones had metric. So I want to figure out what I've got. There's just a snap ring holding the front wheels on these things. And this is an older serial number tractor, so I'm guessing it's a one inch spindle. No, see, this one is smaller, and this rim does not fit on this spindle. Okay. These look like a match pair. Yeah. So those don't fit. I do have this one from a, a tractor that burnt up and I bet you that'll fit. It does. Okay. So that's a one inch. Yeah. That's the one inch for sure. I either need to get some different rims or see if I have two of the one inch rims. I wonder if I could put these Vettersteins on those rims. I've got some research to do. It's still working on the project though. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, well today is day 11 and I'm just gonna do a little housekeeping today. I actually did my research last night. I figured a lot out about the rims. I'm either gonna use the stock 318 rims or try to find some older 400 John Deere rims. They're actually calling for some snow and some really cold temperatures moving in in the next couple of days. So I'm gonna start rearranging the shop, getting things put away. I brought in a friend. 
So Brutus has made his way over to this building. We're going to get stuff cleaned up the rest of the night and then pack it up and prepare for the this oncoming storm that's I'm sure to disappoint. But then we'll see what we can do once we're snowed in maybe. The worst part is I can't paint in here. I don't want to paint in here. So that's going to be a challenge because I'm getting close to being ready to paint. We'll see. All right, let's get cleaned up at least. Okay, we're up to day 12 and I've brought Brutus in. I don't have much time left for today. So I think I'm going to pull wheel weights off of this and that'll check me off for day 12. that. We'll see what one of these little Harbor Freight carts is capable of holding. <laughs> so I always run a lot of weight on my tractors. These don't have the tires filled with fluid, but I've, I've ran fluid in the past. Just seems like I always spring a leak one way or another. So I fill them up with cast iron and it doesn't leak. These are starter weights and these are a little bit heavier yet. Looky there. There's another weight on the inside. <laughs> so I had these three weights on these tires. Well, that looks weird. I haven't seen Brutus without the wheel weights on in a long time. Some big meats. Okay, I worked on the tractors one more day and I got in a session of weightlifting. So this was a win-win for today. All right, well, it is day 13 and things are gonna get a little bit light here because it's almost Christmas. The polar vortex has descended upon us, so I got the shop clear full of stuff. So it's gonna get a little slow on this in the next couple days, but I'll honor the commitment and stay at it. So I think that the body panels are pretty good on this one and I'm probably gonna use most of the body panels from Brutus here on Bill or the new version of Bill. We've got to figure out what to call it. This one I had to modify. I cut this notch in it in order to accommodate the oil cooler hoses that are on the bottom of here. Some days you won't have much in you. Day 14 was the big polar vortex day and it did let us down on snow but did not disappoint on temperatures. We had wind chills of minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit and I spent most of my time that day tending to fires and making the video about keeping three fires going. So I've also found that when I attempt to record something every day, I increase my chances that something will go wrong while filming, like not remembering to connect my audio cable to the wireless microphone receiver. So while there is no audio here, I still do have proof that I used what little time I had left at the end of the day to remove a few more body components from Brutus. And I think what I'm saying is I can't imagine putting a good paint job on this tractor because I've kind of used it and abused it and not worried about what it looks like. It's going to be weird to have something nice. Oh yeah. I also realized that I might be overdue for an oil change. So don't judge me too harshly there because it's not as bad as it looks, but this isn't the first time I've had audio trouble and I can assure you it won't be the last. Day 15, Christmas Eve. We just got home from my in-laws and uh, now we're back. The girls are snuggled in their beds with visions of sugar plums dancing in their heads and I can't forget about my old pal Brutus, especially on Christmas Eve. So we're just getting this out and that counts. See you tomorrow. So it's Christmas 2022. All right, well today is day 17, the day after Christmas. So yesterday I put the battery back in because I just yanked it out. I didn't film it because I had the camera packed up for, I walked through here and I looked at this thing and I thought, man, that is filthy. I should run it outside if the weather gets better and blow it all off. It's about 20 degrees outside. It's nice and balmy warm now, so let's do that. So I also thought while well, I'm moving this outside and blowing it all off, it'd be a good time to start talking about how this engine came to be in Brutus. So this 316 was dropped off at my house by a family friend and it had a bad engine. My father-in-law worked at a local go-kart factory and they used Robin Subaru engines in all their go-karts and he had some really good connections to get me a good price on this 25 horsepower twin. Rick swears by these Robins, and now after all these years, I have to agree. And in order to make it work in place of the original Onan, I had to raise it up about three quarters of an inch with a special plate, and then I put some notches in the frame to accommodate for the oil filter and the oil cooler housing on the side. It came with an adapter for the flywheel to the drive shaft connection on the back, but the holes weren't quite right. So I had a retired machinist neighbor of mine named Ed. He retooled the adapter that came with it. 
so that it would work with my stock drive shaft. Once I got it bolted into the frame, I just had to rework the stock wiring and the choke and throttle cables and the fuel line. And probably the biggest obstacle was getting the factory muffler mounted up so it exited the side panel of the tractor in the same place as the stock muffler did. I completely custom built those manifold pipes between the heads of the engine and the muffler and luckily it turned out pretty good. It's worked and held up ever since. You'll notice that this tractor doesn't have a front clutch and that's by design. I never went to the trouble of seeing if I could get it to work on this tractor because I never planned to mow with it at all. It's just a workhorse and play machine. All right, well, hopefully you like that little history lesson on how this engine came to be. And I'm gonna start removing all the wiring. This is the harness from the, from the John Deere, I think. No, this is the harness from the tractor. I might've rewired it. I don't know, it fits together. It's amazing what you can do in your past and then not remember what you did. I'm gonna disconnect the starter. It's on the opposite side than the Onan. You know, this one always started hard too. It started like, like it wasn't getting enough juice to the starter. So I'm gonna to try to integrate the starter improvement kit or that relay that's on the 318 onto this one. And I think I'm betting it'll make it start better. I hope anyway. So this was a custom location for the fuel pump. I had to put this in right there to have a place to mount it. A decent mounting spot. 318 will have the same bolt hole. I'll disconnect the fuel supply from this fuel pump. There we go. Throttle cable's up there. Choke cable's there. It always moved hard. This is a hose that I put on there to connect to my front spray tank. Okay, I think it's all disconnected electrically. No, not at all. Gotta get the ground wire off. It's nice to have this documented, so if I need help putting it back together, I can see what all I did. And that is removed. Okay, right there's the drive shaft connected to the back of the flywheel. That's a custom piece I had made. I just gotta knock those four bolts out and I'll have that loose. There's four out of four. There we go. All right, it's time to take the four engine bolts out of the bottom. Here's one, here's two of them. This is the riser plate that I made to raise this engine up to get it to line up with the drive shaft. I drilled and tapped these in the riser plate so that I could put the bolts yeah. in through the bottom and just thread them in. Three, four. Let's give it a wiggle. Oh yeah. Easy peasy. All right. I actually quit last night because I didn't have anything to put this engine on. So it's day 18, actually spent a whole day with the girls out shopping at the mall. Well, that's something I didn't think I was gonna say, but they wanted to go to the mall and they're still at a point where they don't mind me going along. Matter of fact, they wanted me to go, so. And that's when the battery in the mic receiver died again, unbeknownst to me. So I just kept filming and gabbing along like a fool. I didn't know it had quit, but right here I'm professing my love for these Harbor Freight wheel dollies. I use them anytime I can, and I think they're one of the greatest shop accessories for anyone that's over 40. Before you're 40, you won't perceive them as having as much value, but believe me, once you start putting heavy objects on wheels, they quickly become worth their weight in wheel weights. So I had the engine all loose and brutus and basically just needed to lift it out of there. When I did, I spilled gas all over the floor, but thanks to the shop towels from Wes at Watch Wes Work, that wasn't a big issue on the floor. So I wanted to just get the two tractors side by side so that I could start modifying the chassis of Bill to accept the Robin engine. I basically knew what all I had to do, but I made up my mind that I was going to get that engine switched over so that I could do a shakedown and a test run before I started painting anything on Bill. So you see this difference in the frame here? Oil cooler. I gotta put that notch in that one over there. All right, so we are gonna get this marked out and get it cut. Right on. Yeah, 
I have a plasma cutter. I don't think it's made an appearance on this channel yet though. This is a first. So a plasma cutter hooks up to 220 volts, just like a welder. So I got it plugged into a welder plug there. And then you also need to connect an air line because it uses air to blow the material out. And then this is your, your stinger. You have to ground it. Probably get a good ground right there. Try to keep the shower of sparks from blowing all over the shop. So a plasma cutter isn't as bright as a welder. You can usually just, you know, I use a pair of sunglasses, some tinted glasses, and then a face shield to help keep the sparks off my face, but, and some gloves, but it doesn't produce near the heat or the light that a welder would. It's kind of more like a blowtorch. Caught some hot ones in the rag here. Covering up this cylinder right here. There's always a chance that it could catch the cardboard on fire, but more than likely, you know, the sparks aren't crazy hot. They'll just bounce and hit the floor. It'll kind of contain it. That was a good rag. Yeah, I think we're, we'll be good to go on that now. All right, I think that looks good for tonight. It's about 1.30 a.m. I'm gonna wrap it up. All right, we are 19 days into this, and I think today is the day I'm gonna try to resurrect Bill. I wanna swap the engine over into this chassis just to do a trial fit and make sure everything's working. Primarily, I wanna check for leaks. I think I've experienced some leaks at the orbital on this tractor in the past. I just wanna confirm everything before I, before I paint and finish the frame. So we're gonna get it put in there. I need to make some accommodations in order to be able to drain the oil from the engine and just make sure I have the wiring all correct. So a lot of things to do to make sure it's ready to go. I'd like to fire it up and move Bill around and see how he's doing. And then if everything looks good, I'll yank the motor back out and we'll do some touch-ups on the frame. I'm gonna stick this two by four right on top of the... Trent's here to help me today. You ready? You need some gloves, why don't you put on, those are my gloves, yeah, put those on. I'll get some too. Slide that chain. There you go. There, that's not bad. Oh, darn it. Okay. Okay, turn the engine so the muffler needs to be in the front. There you go. There you go. All right, next time I'll just use the tractor maybe. All right, I forgot to put the drive shaft back in there, so I'm gonna have to tip the engine forward, see if I get that in there. Other tractor was definitely easier to grab a hold of without the cooling fins in there for the transmission. Yikes, these cooling fins are hard on gloves. I just barely touched them with my gloves, dang it. Okay, I've been working on the wiring for a little while. I got the engine all bolted in there. I've got the starter hooked up and the ground cable hooked up. And now I'm just trying to figure out the wiring. So it's a little bit different than my other tractor. I did some comparisons between the two, a few educated guesses. I frankly don't know what I'm doing. You can hear my starter improvement kit clicking and I don't have any signal going to the starter yet. So that's gonna be this, which would have been connected to the starter. Okay, there's no spark. Okay. She cranks. Okay, it doesn't have any gas hooked up yet. Okay, we're gonna lift this fender pan off of here. You have to lift it up and it kind of slides up and back off of here, the whole thing. Okay, where are my fuel lines? If it fires, I should have the ignition hooked up right. And if it doesn't 
fire. Then we got some more, I say we, but I mean me. I haven't got the throttle or the choke cable hooked up, which those I can do after the fact. Those aren't a big deal. I just want to make sure this works and that nothing, nothing else leaks or needs attention on this tractor. Theoretically, it's got gas, it's got ignition. I don't know if it's got spark, but here comes the test. Power steering. Moves. So it's nice and still when it's in neutral. That's a big plus. That engine just sits perfect in there. <laughs> Bill's back. It's alive. So it's not leaking any oil. Everything seems to be functioning fine. I'm glad that the uh, ignition worked. I can sort out the wiring now, make that clean and neat. I'll yank this back out and get ready for paint. So I think that's a good stopping point for this video. We got Bill alive again, the transplant worked. We'll just put him on life support to do the painting. I don't think we're over the hill yet because the paint project's gonna be a big part of this, but we're getting there. So once again, let me know what you think about a name for Bill Brutus merged together here. I'm accepting any ideas, so let me know. The other thing I want to talk about is paint and we'll bring that up in the next video because I got some, some ideas for paint. I, I don't want it to be green. I'll just leave it at that. But I want to thank you so much for clicking on this video. Hope you liked it. If I'm lucky, I will see you in the next one. I don't know how I'm here, but we're here. <laughs>